Okay, hello students. Uh, the topic that we are going to discuss today, uh, that is, this is your uh, first unit uh, of your syllabus, that is the introduction to automobile engineering. In this, uh, we will uh, unit, we will uh, discuss about uh, what is an automobile, uh, what is the history of uh, this automobile engineering, where uh, this uh, automobile engineering started. Okay. Then the various uh, terminologies and nomenclature associated uh, with the, the automobile engineering. So the first question comes is what is an automobile? Okay. Now a vehicle that produces power within itself for its propulsion okay, is known as a self-propelled vehicle. So all automobiles uh, are what they are self-propelled uh, uh, vehicles means they produce power within themselves like they have engine inside them and that engine produces the power and uh, that power is used to make the vehicle move in the forward direction. So hence automobiles what are they are self-propelled vehicles because they have the power producing unit installed within themselves. For example mopeds, scooters, motorcycles, cars, jeeps, trucks, tractors, ships, aircrafts, rockets, etc. Okay. So all these come under your self-propelled vehicles. Okay. Now the self-propelled vehicle that is used for transportation of goods and passengers on the ground, it is known as automobile. Okay. So the self-propelled vehicle jo hum kya karte hai, that we use to transport goods and passengers on the ground. Okay. So that those are known as automobiles. These are different from the aeronautical vehicles because aeronautical vehicles, they are like, for example, these are planes, helicopters and rockets and the marine vehicles, okay. ships, boats and submarines. Now, what is the difference? The difference is all these three, that is automobiles, aeronautical vehicles, and marine vehicles, all these three are self-propelled vehicles, but the operation is different. Automobiles, they run on land or on the ground. Aeronautical vehicles, what they do is they run in the air or the atmosphere. And marine vehicles, they run on the water or under the water. Okay, so ships, boats, and submarines. So this is the classification of uh, various types of uh, vehicles uh, that are like uh, self-propelled vehicles. Okay. Now, if we go into the uh, see the history of uh, automobile engineering. So in 1768, a French army person known as Captain Nicholas Joseph. Okay. Uh, he built the first self-propelled vehicle. Okay, so this vehicle you can see in the bottom. Uh, this this is the actual on the right hand side. You can see this vehicle uh, that is uh, placed in uh, a museum. Okay, and and in the bottom you can see the persons they are actually running this vehicle. So this uh, vehicle was uh, being run with the help of a steam engine. In the front you can see this uh, dome shaped uh, object in which uh, water is placed, this water was heated. And when uh, this uh, water gets converted into steam, so from this pipe on top, the steam goes into this, uh, your uh, cylinder in which a piston is placed. And this piston, when it moves up and down, it rotated this front wheel. So this front wheel was given the power uh, to run and the vehicle was able to move in the forward or reverse direction. So first, Automobile was developed by Mr. Uh, Captain Nicholas Joseph in 1768. The speed that was achieved was 2.5 miles per hour or 4.02 kilometers per hour in 15 minutes. And so 15 minutes uh, it took uh, for the engine to reach this speed. And it was a three wheeler. It has three wheels, one in the front and two at the back. 
So this was your first ever vehicle that was developed. Then in 1886, uh, Mr. Carl Benz, uh, he invented the first gasoline powered uh, automobile. So petrol was used for the first time by Mr. Carl Benz. On the right hand side, you can see uh, the uh, actual uh, vehicle that he built. It was like an rickshaw where the engine was placed at the back. Uh, and uh, this engine was run on uh, the uh, gasoline. Okay, it was 954 cc engine, two to three horsepower. Okay, and it runs at 250 rpm. So maximum speed achieved was 16 kilometers per hour. It was a four-stroke engine that uses used carburetor in it. Okay, so it was a single-cylinder engine. So the weight of the vehicle was approximately 265 kgs. Okay. So it was water cooled. So all these stuff, uh, things like cooling system was also there. So it was, uh, this was the first uh, gasoline engine that was developed back in 1886 by Mr. Carl Benz. Okay. Then uh, Henry Ford, he was an American industrialist he was uh, he is uh, given the credit uh, to be the founder of the first affordable motor car so any family uh, can buy this car and they can use this car for their personal transportation uh, needs so the first affordable motor car was developed by mr henry ford okay. so this was basic about the history uh, of uh, how automobile development uh, that began. Now, if we talk of uh, the basic components that are uh, available uh, in any automobile, so the first is your the basic structure. So, in the basic uh, structure, you will see the frame will be there, on which the frame is the base, uh, on which the chassis uh, is installed, on which the engines are installed the cooling system, uh, so all the auxiliaries, the controls, the transmission system, so everything is installed on the basic structure of the automobile. Okay. So that basic structure is your, the frame is there. Okay. Then second is your engine. So the engine is your, uh, this is the uh, device that uh, makes the automobile self-propelled. Okay. Then is your transmission system. Okay, obviously the energy or the power that is developed in the engine has to be transmitted to the wheels. Now this transmission is done with the help of this transmission system. Then is your, the auxiliaries come in. The auxiliaries are your uh, air conditioners, lights uh, that are used, uh, your uh, cooling system is there. Uh, so all these systems that are used, your power windows are there. So all these comes under your the auxiliaries. Okay. Next is your the controls. The controls are like your steering system is there, brake system is there. So all these are your control uh, controls that come in. Next is your the superstructure. Now this superstructure is uh, the uh, outer body uh, that uh, has your uh, the floor, uh, the ceiling of the car, the windows, doors the boot uh, section or the front uh, that is your uh, bonnet section is there so all these uh, comes under your the superstructure now the first uh, if we talk of uh, the basic structure so in the basic structure the basic structure consists of the frame so these uh, two parallel uh, you can see uh, these rectangular uh, uh, pipes you see this these are the frames of uh, the automobile so this becomes the base uh, of uh, the automobile uh, on top of this uh, all the other equipments like your engine uh, your seats your uh, outer structure of the engine <clears throat> so all these transmission system so everything uh, is installed on top of this frame okay <clears throat> so the basic structure consists of the frame 
then the suspension system is also there suspension system uh, is uh, like your shock absorbers or uh, your leaf springs are there in this case so these are your suspension system axle wheels and tires so frame suspension system axles wheels and tires these combine together uh, to form the basic structure uh, of any automobile next it comes is your the engine <clears throat> so it provides the required energy or the power uh, for running the various uh, parts of an uh, automobile like the motion of the automobile that is done at the wheels so uh, the power that we get uh, at the wheels to run the automobile in the forward or backward direction uh, that comes from uh, the engine and the charging of the batteries that is also done uh, with the help of uh, an alternator that is attached to the uh, shaft of the engine okay uh, the uh, various uh, equipments uh, like in your uh, power steering system that is also uh, given power or energy from the crankshaft of the engine uh, so so engine is the main or the heart of any automobile and all the equipments that run uh, are powered that needs power the power is produced by the engine and then it is supplied to various parts of the engine for their working so the engine of an automobile uh, is also known as ic engine or it is internal combustion type of an engine next comes is your the transmission system now the transmission system uh, it consists of uh, the so clutch okay uh, then comes is your the gearbox here in the diagram at the bottom you can see the yellow uh, part is your clutch this clutch connects uh, the engine uh, power to the uh, gearbox so when we are uh, going to change the gear what we normally do is we press the clutch so this means we disengage the uh, engine from the gearbox and then when we change the gear then that uh, when we uh, lift our foot from the clutch uh, the clutch again engages and our car moves in the uh, forward direction according to the gear arrangement we have used so then after the clutch is your this red uh, is your gearbox after the gearbox uh, this gearbox uh, is connected uh, to the rear wheels with the help of this drive shaft this drive shaft is uh, joined uh on one side with the gearbox with the help of a universal uh, bolt and on the other side the, it is connected to the differential uh, with the help of a u bolt okay at the end of uh, this uh, drive shaft there comes is the differential now this differential is installed uh, to provide uh, power to the wheels so depending upon what type of uh, drive you have you have a front wheel drive or a rear wheel drive the differential is attached on the front axle or the back axle okay now this differential what it does is it equally distributes the power or the torque uh, from uh, the engine through the transmission system through the drive shaft on to the right and left wheel of the car okay so the main parts of a transmission system are clutch gearbox propeller shaft and the differential next comes is your the auxiliaries the auxiliaries uh, in auxiliaries uh, electrical systems come into place all the electrical systems like your lighting system is there uh, your heating system is there in the car uh, your air conditioning system is there Uh, your power windows are there so all these things come under your electrical system then comes is your the controls the controls consists of the steering system and the braking system then comes is the superstructure so superstructure is uh, where uh, we are using the uh, frameless or unitary construction okay so in uh, if when i talk of uh, the unitary construction or the frameless construction in that case what happens is the body of uh, the vehicle is joined uh, with the help of rivets and welding to the frame okay so when the frame 
and the body of uh, the outer body of uh, the vehicle they are uh, one piece or they are permanently joined together then that becomes a frameless or a unitary construction but in the case of uh, say bigger automobiles like your buses or trucks uh, we use superstructure in superstructure superstructure the frame is not permanently connected to the body of the vehicle okay the body is uh, developed uh, separately and then with the help of uh, rivets and bolts uh, it is connected to the frame of the vehicle so that is your superstructure so there is difference between your superstructure and the frameless or unitary construction yeah. in modern uh, cars we are using frameless construction okay uh, okay but in bigger vehicles like your cars and trucks we use the superstructure okay so here uh, uh, we are uh, we can see that what are the major components are there uh, so you can see uh, this is the actual vehicle and you can see the major components that are installed uh, inside a vehicle so starting from the front we have the headlight we have dynamo is there we have side uh, indicator lights are there uh, steering box is there front suspension the brakes are there uh, the starter motor is there starter motor is used uh, to start uh, the vehicle to start the vehicle uh, from uh, when it is stopped so when we press uh, the uh, ignition key and uh, then the starter motor comes into place so it gives uh, the first uh, revolutions to the engine to start the engine uh, from uh, stop position okay uh, then comes is your accelerator pedal gearbox is there brake pedal is there clutch pedal uh, the gear stick is there with with the help of which we can change the gears normally in a car we have four forward and one reverse gear is there and then a neutral is there okay uh, then comes is your handbrake handbrake is placed just uh, near uh, this uh, gear stick so we can uh, put this handbrake when we are parking the car okay then propeller shaft uh, it connects the we have already seen that it connects the uh, transmission to the uh, rear uh, axle through the differential so propeller shaft uh, is there then is your shock absorbers are placed here we can see uh, there is uh, there are two types of shock as absorbers are there uh, one is this uh, cylindrical tubular type and the other is your this uh, is your uh, your leaf spring type the two types of shock absorbers are there then drum brakes are there the petrol tank that is placed at the back of the car rear lights pillar cap rear axle is there steering wheel with the help of which uh, that is install uh, uh, with which the driver controls uh, the motion of the car that if it, he wants to go in the left or right direction or straight direction then windscreen wipers distributor then is your plug is there this is your distributor plug is there the coil is there the coil what it does is it increases uh, the voltage uh, the battery voltage is around uh, 12 volts but the spark voltage required is around uh, 12000 uh, to 20000 volts so this coil it increases the voltage from 12 volts to 12000 volts so air filter is there that filters the air then the engine carburetor is there carburetor uh, is provided in petrol engines to get the required mixture of air and petrol to the uh, inlet of the engine for combustion then battery and then the radiator that is the cooling system so these are the basic major components of any automobile now we come on to what is the classification of automobiles okay uh, the first is based upon the purpose so there are passenger vehicles like your cars buses and motorcycles then is your farm vehicles like your tractors combines and harvesters then is your goods vehicles uh, it examples are lorry truck pickup truck or trailers are there so depending upon the purpose of use we can classify the vehicles now based upon the capacity we have the heavy motor vehicles or hmv uh, in which large trucks buses and tractors come in 
light motor vehicles or lmb your cars jeeps motor cycles they all come under your lmb and then is your l tvs or light transport vehicles in which your small trucks mini buses and tempos come in so depending upon the capacity of the vehicle we can classify the automobiles next based upon the fuel used we have petrol engine diesel engine gas engine solar powered vehicles hydrogen powered vehicles electric vehicles steam engine vehicles hybrid vehicles hybrid vehicles where we use uh, uh, one or more in combination okay so hybrid vehicles uh, you can say your cng vehicle so in that what we use is we use both petrol and cng so you can uh, change between what type of uh, uh, say fuel you want to use while you are running your car so that is your hybrid vehicle and then comes is your hybrid electrical vehicles so in this uh, we can uh, use uh, again a combination of any of the above uh, say we can use petrol and hybrid uh, electric then your uh, gas or electric or you can use uh, your diesel and electric or solar and electric so this is based upon fuel and then based upon the transmission system we have the conventional uh, or the manual transmission system manual transmission is you change the gears manually by use uh, moving the stick in the forward or backward direction okay. the gear stick is there so that is your conventional or manual transmission system then comes is your uh, second type is your uh, semi automatic transmission system okay in semi automatic transmission system uh, uh, in semi automatic and automatic transmission system uh, the clutch is not there okay so the clutch pedal is not there in semi automatic type of system on the right hand side the diagram you can see uh, on the right hand side you can see this plus sign and the minus sign is there okay and on the left hand side you can see this r n d and s is there okay and then is your p is there so uh, this is your uh, fully uh, say automatic uh, transmission system in which you can uh, jump uh, into semi automatic and automatic type of transmission system so if you uh, move this uh, lever or the gearbox on the right side okay so you will have plus and minus signs so in the semi automatic type of uh, transmission you don't need to press uh, the clutch okay but you need to move this uh, lever in the forward direction if you move the lever in the forward direction the gear will change in the forward direction like uh, your first gear will be one then you uh, after some time uh, say the acceleration takes place you move the lever in the forward direction the gear will change in the uh, to the second gear okay? and if you want to reduce the gear you move the lever in the backward direction so this is your you are not using the clutch okay in this case but uh, you are uh, changing the gears manually so this is your semi automatic type of uh, transmission in which you are changing the gear manually but you are not using the clutch in fully automatic type of uh, transmission if you move this lever on the left hand side and you move this lever in d position so this is your drive position okay now in this case you do not need to use the clutch and you do not need to increase or decrease the gear also the gear is uh, changed automatically depending upon the rpms of the engine okay and uh, if you move this lever in the n position this is your neutral position and uh, if you move this lever in the r position that will be your uh, res uh, reverse gear and if you move this uh, lever in the up in the p position that is your parking is there okay so this is your uh, uh, difference between the semi automatic and automatic type of transmission so based upon transmission you have three types that is your conventional or uh, manual then is your semi automatic and the fully automatic transmission then based upon the drive uh, you will have the left hand drive or the right hand drive okay then fluid drive system is there then is your front wheel drive system rear wheel drive system and all wheel drive system or your four wheel drive system is there okay so we will be uh, studying about all these types of drives uh, in your uh, coming uh, say 
chapters okay where we will study about the transmission system in that chapter we will study about each and every type of this uh, system in detail now based upon the body and doors number of doors available we can classify the automobiles as sedan hatchback station wagon convertible sports utility vehicle suvs multi utility vehicles muvs delivery vans etc okay now in this diagram uh, you can see uh, the various uh, body types so this is uh, the sedan okay so it has a elongated uh, this uh, trunk at the back so the uh, luggage capacity is more in a sedan okay um, in a hatchback uh, it is up till this trunk or the rear wheel the front is same as the sedan the only difference is at the back okay so there is lesser space uh, the space is provided behind the rear seat <coughs> and uh, that is the difference between the hatchback the uh, storage capacity or luggage storage capacity is less in a hatchback as compared to sedan then comes is your roadster that is uh, it has uh, the uh, you can say the ceiling is not there okay? the top is not there then comes is your uh, cub okay uh, then is your suv is there sports utility vehicle then is your pickup truck so you in a pickup truck you will have uh, this uh, uh, large open space at the back is there then micro is there like your uh, the tata uh, they have a car is there the micro it's a, it's a more of a city car is there okay uh, then comes is your uh, cabriolet is there cabriolet has uh, uh, in roadster we only have two seats Okay. In cabriolet, you have uh, two seats at the front, and plus there is a rear seat also. So that is the difference between a roadster and a cabriolet. Is there? Then comes is your supercar. Okay. This is your high uh, speed car. Then comes this shape of the car. This is your coupe. Is there? Then a wagon is there. Minivan is there. Uh, then is your caravan or camper van is there. Truck and big truck. So this is all uh, depending upon the body type. Uh, you can uh, classify the cars okay and application point of view also okay. now the basic difference between here you can see is the difference between a sedan and a hatchback so this is your sedan vehicle uh, and on the right hand side this is your hatchback is there so you can see the boot space at the back uh, is more in a sedan okay and uh, the uh, this door uh, it is separate from the say the inner space where the passenger uh, the passenger space is there so this door is separate but in the hatch hatchback uh, this uh, door opens uh, into the hatchback door opens into the passenger area also plus the luggage capacity is less in a hatchback okay so the length of the car uh, is less in a hatchback uh, in a sedan the length of the car is uh, say more uh, live example uh, you can say is your uh, maruti uh, swift is there that is a hatchback okay and desire uh, they both have the same engine same capacity everything is the same the only difference is the body type is there hatchback and sedan hatchback is swift and sedan is your uh, uh, maruti uh, desire is there okay <clears throat> now next comes is your uh, crossover utility utility vehicle it is called cuv uh, it is also known by the names of xuv and uh, some uh, manufacturers they term it as csuv is there okay so sabhi ka jo terminology hai different uh, vehicles they uh, the different manufacturers they have different uh, terminology but all are what they are all cross over utility vehicles okay so what it is it is a type of sports utility vehicle of unibody construction so is ki kya hai uh, it's a it's a sports utility vehicle uh, but it has what it has unibody construction means the outer body is uh, 
permanently connected to the frame of the uh, vehicle or the automobile. So it is a unibody construction or it is a frameless construction or a unibody construction. So it is a SUV, sports utility vehicle, but it is a it has a unibody construction compared to uh, the truck based SUVs. They typically have a better interior comfort, more comfortable ride, superior fuel economy and less of a road capability. So the crossover utility vehicles or CUVs, uh, they are designed uh, for more comfortable ride. Uh, they have a good uh, fuel economy, but we cannot uh, move them on off-road conditions. Okay? They are not made for off-road. So many uh, crossover, hai, they lack what? They lack all-wheel drive. They have only, uh, say, two-wheel drive, front wheel or back rear wheel drive is there. So, which in combination with their lesser off-road capability, examples are Tata Tiago, NRG is there, Maruti Suzuki Ignis is there, Hyundai i20 is there, and Honda WRV is there. So, these are all your cross-utility vehicles. Okay. So, in this, what we have done is, we have taken some... Uh, uh, say uh, advantages of the sports utility vehicle and some advantages of the uh, say uh, comfortable or the uh, vehicles uh, or by making it a unibody construction. So that makes it a more comfortable uh, ride and it is bigger in size than the sedan or your uh, normal hatchbacks. The next type comes is your sports utility vehicle. It is a classification that combines uh, elements of uh, on-road and off-road vehicles. Also. So you can take this uh, vehicle both uh, on-road and off-road conditions also. Okay, like your uh, you can go for dirt, uh, say in the where the roads are not there. Okay, so off-road you can go. So such as they have raised ground clearance. Plus, they have the uh, four-wheel drive also provided in it. Okay, so they are more suitable for off-road uh, vehicle uh, movement. Is there? So SUVs are built on light truck chassis. Okay. So this is not a unibody construction. It has a frame separate and chassis separate. Is there? So the examples are your MG Hector is there, Hyundai Creta is there. Maruti, uh, Suzuki, they have Vitara, Brezza is there, uh, Mahindra Thar is there, uh, Toyota Fortuner is there. So these are all your sports utility vehicles. Okay. Next comes is your, what is your multi utility vehicle or MUVs? So these types of vehicles, they are designed uh, uh, to carry heavy loads and people on the uh, roads or the plane surface. Okay. So MUVs uh, generally based in the form of uh, van is there. Uh, they do not have uh, the all wheel drive, AWD or the four wheel drive is not there in them. And they are not uh, suitable for going off road. Okay. So examples are Toyota Innova, which is a multi utility vehicle. Maruti Suzuki Etiga is again another example and Maruti Suzuki SL6. These are some of the examples of multi-utility multi vehicles. 